Welcome to a new episode of All That Jazz. I'm your host, Matyash, and I have with me Elizabeth Phoenix. Welcome to the podcast. Hi, thanks for having me. You're welcome. So Elizabeth is a, uh, you teach intuition to people and you're a channeler slash something else. Do you also like, um, when you channel, I, 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 we, we know we talked before and I, I don't, I have uh, some, some, a little problem with uh, channels, but you, you put me at ease. You, you channeled, um, so to, to give the audience a backstory, um, I gave uh, a kind of challenge and you, you channeled um, Joe McHugh, which a lot of people, oh, I have the book here. So a lot of people in the 12-step community might know, know this guy, this is Joe McHugh. Anyway, it's very, uh, it very interesting and um, I wanna thank you for that. So um, how did you get into this, uh, this kind of work? I was, kind of thrown into it. It's strange because I feel like before I started, I started in 2016, I believe. I didn't believe in psychics. I didn't believe in God. I didn't believe in anything spiritual at all. And then I was randomly listening to a podcast and the podcaster said something about us being spiritual spirits living in a human body mm-hmm. and it just resonated with me and it started making me explore and I just I just wanted to learn how to do it so I then started listening to a psychic podcast where people would call into these psychics and they would get this crazy information and I was intrigued by it and said I really want to do this And I spent pretty much all of my time, my free time researching it, trying to figure out what it was to make people connect, how to do it. And it was really, really frustrating. I was unsuccessful for a really long time. So now I figured it out. And that's my goal is trying to teach people so they don't get as frustrated as I got. Right. So uh, we spent... A lot of your, all of your free time researching this and uh, probably uh, read a lot of books, watched a lot of YouTubes, YouTube videos, YouTubes, and uh, you went to probably, did you go to some uh, workshops as well? I did some workshops. It was mostly, it really, I did a lot of YouTubing and a lot of reading. And I had a couple um, psychic readings that I did for myself that I bought, I worked with a couple other psychics. And then I had an invitation to a, to a mediumship circle. It was this free mediumship circle. The guy invited me to to join and he was, he kind of pushed me. Mm -hmm. He had a picture of someone we were supposed to read for. And he went around the circle and asked everybody to say what they got. And I was like, well, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to do this. And He forced me to do it. I got something and I was right on. And so I think for people, if they get one hit of something that's right, it can really push them and give them the confidence to move forward. Right. Um, This reminds me, I once, uh, uh, Conan Doyle, who is famous for the um, um, Sherlock Holmes uh, uh, stories, he was into spiritualism. And when I was living in Scotland, I was living in a hostel that was near the spiritualism center, which the spiritualism church, sorry, Conan Doyle Center, that's where the building was. Um, and uh, one time I went to the psychic evening or whatever. I just wanted, I really didn't want to do it, but I was kind of intrigued. And uh, they gave us little cards, right? And they had like odd shapes on them. And so uh, you were supposed to just interpret what you heard from the no, you were just uh, supposed to interpret from the image for the other person, and it seemed to be accurate. So, uh, but my question is, is that just intuition and I was getting through shapes or is that something, uh, 
like a kind of a good guesswork or I, I don't know what was happening, but the lady was like, yeah, this is, this is really accurate for me. <laughs> that's a really, that's a really good question. I, I feel like it is, it, there's that always that question, right? Am I making it up? Is it a good guess? Is it my intuition? Mm. You know, it's your intuition when it doesn't appear to be coming from you like your ego, like if I have a card in front of me and you ask me what shape is on the other side. So I post these exercises on my YouTube channel all the time. What shape is on the other side of this card? Mm. And if you just say, oh, I think it's a triangle, let me guess, then that you're just, it's a good guess. But if you're really tuning into yourself and getting the information and it just sort of, pops into your head or you see it in your imagination or you're guided to look at something in the room, that's when it's your intuition. And you'll know it's your intuition when it's like a fleeting thought. Like you can almost barely hold on to it. Like it's, did I just see a triangle or did I just, did I just think that? Mm. It's like a glimmer. Well, yeah, it's uh... I have a side of me that's very analytical. So sometimes there, there would be a coincidence that happens and I'll be like, yeah, maybe this would have happened anyway. Or, you know, uh, I don't know, <laughs> you know, but you're saying that there's something, um, something more. I know uh, Carl Jung talked about um, synchronicity. There, there's synchronicity that happens uh, to people that uh, they may rationalize away but actually it is a thing that happens. Yeah, I really believe in synchronicity and I have seen it play out so much in my life with just crazy coincidences mm. that I really don't believe in coincidence anymore. Just random people showing up at the right time that you just couldn't make this stuff up. You're thinking about something and the next thing you know, you see it on a license plate or like you're having a really hard time with something and you're like, Oh God, help me. Like, just like, mm. and then next thing, you know, the license plate healing, like is right in front of you stopped at a stop sign. <laughs> and it's like, maybe I'm just paying attention more than other people. Well, okay. Uh, since uh, we're going down this road, what about the, uh, what about the 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 numbers like uh, uh no the uh, the time when it's yeah. like when it's like one 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 like four ones you know and uh i think my mother used to be like oh did this mean something but i was like was well, like uh how i you know i've kind, of, kind of like in my mind i discounted it as you know rubbish <laughs> so um, is there is there anything to that well i think it's the meaning that you give to it so mm. Um, if you look up the reticular activating system, when you start, it's, it's, and I don't know, like this, all the science behind it, but when you, it's to do with the way your brain works, when you are thinking about something, it's going to show up in your life, right? So if all of a sudden, let's say you're looking at buying a certain kind of car, right? You never see it on the road. All of a sudden you're looking at buying this car and you see it on every street corner, so you sort of get in your life what you're looking for, what you're focusing on. And so if you are expecting to see 1111, then you're going to see 1111 wherever you are. But when you attach meaning to it, that's where the power is. And you can use it as sort of a guiding post. Right. If so that makes sense. So uh, this is more obvious in, in if you're praying for a sign and then something uh, happens that's um, related to what you were praying for. And you're like, oh, this is a uh, this is a confirmation of what I was praying for. I should I should buy that company or <laughs> I don't know. Right. Well, I mean, I think. I use them as signs. I do use them as signs mm. that I'm on the right path that 
if I do have a question like that, should I go route A or route B? And I'm really struggling because I'm in my all in my head, head about it. I will ask for a sign. And then I also ask for the knowledge that when the sign presents itself, that I go, that I know that's my sign. Right. And I um, think that's the piece because you could say, oh, I just saw this feather, you know, on the floor and you have a, like a feather pillow. Mm -hmm. Is that your sign? Yeah. Like it's, you said, a rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, but a lot of, uh, I guess a lot of people in the business world um, go with the gut feeling. Like I've read uh, several books by, by uh, Mr. Trump and uh, he's big into, um, uh, he was big into, and probably still is into gut feeling. Like he would, he would uh, think about a deal and be like a, a gut feeling would tell no. And then like a year later, there would be a hurricane and devastate that area and be like, Oh, I'm glad I didn't buy that real estate or whatever. So um and it's multiple times that apparently saved them the gut feeling. So uh, even even people that normally wouldn't associate it with intuition, they they do rely on some kind of uh, other not rational uh, thought process that might be in some ways better, you know. Uh huh. And to me, I equate intuition with that gut feeling. Mm. And I do believe everybody has it. And most people will admit to having that gut feeling and usually following it. And they'll tell you if they don't follow it, bad things have happened. Like a hurricane came <laughs> in that area, right? Yeah, or, or uh, some, somebody might have a bad feeling about somebody or somebody might meet somebody and be like, oh, this person, this uh, person is 100% solid. But then the question becomes, if they're wrong i've had i think uh given that i've lived in hostels i've had the opportunity to see sometimes my first perception of the person was sometimes wrong and uh -huh. i'll admit that sometimes i prejudge a person and uh you know when you work i used to work on the streets uh in toronto uh, as a street fundraiser and one of the things that people would say to me uh was don't prejudge anybody just uh, you know try to approach as many people um so um let's talk about uh, how to get uh better with intuition because sometimes oftentimes i doubt my intuition so how do i get better at intuiting things practice practice it's all about practicing because until you know how the information comes to you and feels to you, you question yourself mm. or you take a yes as a no. And I had that experience. Sorry, there is a helicopter going overhead. All right. It's gone now. <laughs> yeah. So that's, and that's why I post these exercises. So people can really hone their skills and know what it feels like to receive and what I found is that pretty quickly people start to understand when it's their logical mind versus their intuition, but it okay. takes a while to get there. So when you're in the process that I, that's successful for me is asking my intuition a question. So let's say I want to know if the person I am meeting later today is a decent person. I would ask my intuition, is so-and-so a decent person? Or what do I need to know about so-and-so? And I might just get a little bit of information, like a little piece, and it may seem totally out of place. I may think of something absolutely ridiculous, like a, like a cookie, for instance. Okay. What am I supposed to do with that? So then I say, you have to ask more questions what does the cookie have to do with this person and what kind of, what kind of person they are? And then you just keep going and going and going with that questioning process until you really have a good idea, but you have to use all of your senses. So not only what you're receiving as far as what's popping into your mind or what's popping into your imagination, but the feeling for me is really big. So what, do, what does my body feel like? Do I get anxiety? 
Do I feel angry? Do I feel sad? Do I feel like adventurous and excited? And going from that. But a lot of us have preconceptions about people. So it's it's hard <laughs> when you're doing that quick judgment. I've just met somebody on the street. Is this a good person? Oh, I think this person is like a creep. And, and then you cut yourself off and it could be your door to something exciting and fantastic. You know, if you right. were selling something, he could have been like your biggest buyer for the day. Yeah. And you just cut him off. You're like, no, I know he looks, he looks a little weird. I'm not going to go over there. Yeah. Like me, I look a little weird. So nah, don't, <laughs> don't, don't ask him anything. Um, all right. So uh, what's uh what would be a simple exercise that people can do? Uh, the best one. And the one I think people have the most fun with is practicing colors. So they could just take a bag or box of crayons or markers and close their eyes, pick out randomly, pick out a color, hold it in their hand, close their eyes, relax, ask the intuition to show them what color it is. Oh, wow. And okay. get the feeling on it. And, and it's hard because, when, especially when you're learning, it is really hard because you get a little anxious, at least for me sometimes. Like, oh, and especially for me doing what I do, teaching people, like, whoa, what if I get it wrong? There's so much pressure. Right. Um, but it is fun. And I find people have a really easy time with starting with colors. It's easier for me to do people at this point, And probably just because that's what I'm practicing the most with, I can't do my own exercises because I already know the answer. So I do most of my work, obviously reading for people. And it's mm -hmm. just so easy for me now. I can just ask, what do I need to know about so-and-so? And because I'm a channeler, that's how I get most of my information. And I can just, it just starts coming out. So what's some of the typical things that you get, you would get when you do um, a reading for a person and um, uh, let's say they were asking you about um, uh, spouse trouble. Okay. Hmm. So it's, it's a really wide variety because I just, I give whatever I get. And sometimes I might get something that seems so ridiculously stupid. And like, for instance, I just did a reading for somebody and I got something about flowers. Like, why are you showing me flowers? Like, this is boring. This is boring. Give me something else, spirit. Ah, like whatever. Well, it turns out the person I was reading for had a floral shop. Hmm. So... Okay. It's like, it's, it's like, just depends on what spirit wants me to step forward. So if someone is having relationship problems, I probably get a lot of information about what they can do or what the problem is, right? So I might start out getting information about what the problem is and why there's a problem, but I prefer to continue to ask my intuition to show me what the person can do to resolve it. Because if someone's coming for a reading, they're obviously having difficulty. Mm. What good is it for me to tell you what the problem is? How is that going to help you? I'd rather take it further and tell you what you can do. Right to get resolution on it. And so that's where I try to focus it on. Yeah, more pragmatic, like what can they yeah. do instead of why, just uh, how can I, can I overcome this? Yeah, I mean, I might get feelings like if the person is being unfaithful, I might get a feeling about that. And that's mm -hmm. always tricky because, you know, it's hard for me to tell someone that. <laughs> Okay. Can, can you sense that if a person is, uh, is really a kind of bad, like, can you sense by, I don't know uh, if you see ORs or something, can you like, can you get a sense like this is just uh, not trustworthy? Are you like sometimes just, just divorce your husband? <laughs> <laughs> I am very gentle 
and that's my personality and how I, I just really try to hold space for whatever that person is going through. And I also know that everybody is here to make their own decisions. And even though I may get a really bad feeling and know that spirit is pushing them towards divorcing their husband, all I can do is hold that space for them and say, this is the guidance that you have. And, and I'm just making this up off of, you know, what I think spirit would say if someone's having a bad time with their spouse and spirit wants them to divorce their husband, right. they would probably like, you need to love yourself. You need to value yourself. You're not getting that there. There's so much more for you. I could present it to them in that way, but spirit will never come forward and say, you have to divorce your husband. No, it won't say. They, they will... I give what I get. So if spirit did come back and say, that's the recommendation, I feel like I could say that in a gentle way. Right. But hmm. it's usually more like helping them get to the place where they can stand in their power and make that decision for themselves. That's how spirit usually works for me. It's more from a self-love and empowerment that's how the information usually comes through me. Hmm, that that's kind of um, uh, the F Socrates famously gave advice about marriage uh, to guys, and he was well. I think this is from Socrates, and he was like, uh, either uh, get a good good wife, or if you get a bad one, uh, become a philosopher. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess he he got the bad wife. Um, but I guess in his case, maybe he learned more patience and uh, became more forgiving. And, uh, you know, so I guess, I, you know, I guess things could work for good. Well, that's how I always look at everything in my life. And just my philosophy on life is there is a positive in everything. Right. And if you focus there, you're going to see the positive. And you're going to get more of the positive and eventually it's all going to work out anyway. By the way, is your, is your Facebook on? I think I'm hearing some messages oh, coming through. Is. Yeah. I think I closed it. I hope I closed it. Oh, we'll see. So um, let's talk about um, the, the channeling business. Okay. <laughs> So um, how does this work when you, when you channel something, does it, um, cause I know there's, uh, there's various ways. There's a medium. I don't know how that's on the scale. Medium is more, probably more immersed than a channel. A medium is probably like fully there. Like the person, the, not the person, the entity on the other side probably overtakes the thing, the body fully and channel is more like uh, you're just channeling but you're not I actually you... want to flip that. So for me, okay. cause I'm a medium too. And I think too, if you can connect your intuition, if you can channel, you can do mediumship. When I do mediumship, it's more like my intuition. So I ask to like for my intuition, I ask my intuition a question. When I want to talk to a spirit, I ask to talk to that spirit and I'm fully like, I don't go into any meditative state. It's just like, here's what I'm getting. But for channeling, I sort of let everything, all of me step to the side and let the entity come in and really be forward with my consciousness, my body, my everything. Okay, so channeling is the more intense one that uh, kind of... Uh... So if you were to channel right now, it wouldn't be, you would have almost no recollection. It would just be some other entity talking. Well, no. So there are lots of different ways to channel. That's the other thing. So okay. some people, and, and I do this too, I can just write. And I would say when I'm doing readings with people, if I was doing a reading for you and I was getting information, that's a form of channeling. And I'm just letting the information flow through me. Some people do go into that state where they don't 
it's almost like they're asleep when they're channeling. For me, I'm fully present, but I step back so much. I get so relaxed that, and I have my eyes closed and I just allow it to flow through me. And I remember everything. And if I'm channeling and my phone rings, I can just like open my eyes and pick up the phone. Or okay. if you say, Elizabeth, like I'm channeling and you say, oh, Elizabeth, I'm, I mean, I'm right here. It's not like I'm not cognizant of what's going on. I hear everything. I'm a part of it. And I don't go anywhere. I don't go to sleep. Right. right. Some people. Did this take practice? Did you like uh, work on this uh, for a while until you got to this place where, where you're now? A lot of practice, so much practice, so much practice. So how does that look like when you, when you, when somebody's practicing to be a channel? Um, I'm really curious about this. <laughs> it looked a lot of like nothing, <laughs> like me meditating and just waiting to speak. Mm. So I'm a verbal, I, like I said, I do all kinds of channeling. I could do automatic writing. I can just channel as I'm talking to someone, but the type of channeling that I think I get just, it just feels really good for me. And I feel like I can get really clear information for people is through verbal channeling. Hmm. And I just had to wait and get relaxed enough and trust enough that I, it wasn't me speaking to it's about flow, I think. So yeah, when I was learning how to do it, I would just be meditating and say, I want to talk to whoever, Archangel Michael or the Buddha or who, whatever entity I wanted to talk to. Let me talk to you. I only call in the highest uh, vibrational energy and I would meditate and expect to speak. And for a while, I got nothing. <laughs> nothing, <laughs> right. nothing. And then one day I just said, let me just try to speak and see what comes through. Mm. And then it was just like, it just flowed through me. What I'm thinking, if it's, um, if it's an archangel, then wouldn't it, that be a kind of different thing you channel it? Because uh, if you're truly like an, an archangel, that the energy would be so high that, you know, probably a pop or some, I don't know. That's my that's my perception of the uh, the energy of Archangel would be would be so high would be uh, too much for your um, nervous system perhaps so maybe it's a maybe it's a kind of a spiritual transformer that transforms it down to your level maybe I don't know <laughs> I the way that I I've, I've heard it explained by a lot of channels is that you raise your vibration up the entity wants to connect with you and they lower theirs, you meet in between. And I think too, that was why it was taking me so long to connect is I just had so much spiritual work I had to do to be able to get to that place where I could get that high vibration. Now I just live in a high vibration and okay. I can, I can connect at that point, but I do think anybody can do it. And it's more about that relaxing, allowing and letting it flow. Um, because I think, I don't know how much work you actually have to do to raise your vibration because at the end of the day, we're all love. And to get to that place, it's like just finding that place within yourself. So, um, but so you said that you have you raise your vibration, but then for all love, uh, I don't know about you, but I met some bad characters, like some people that came out of prison and did some bad thing, <laughs> you know. So um, um, there's a, a there's a there's a man called David Hawkins that um, disagreed with the. There's a I don't know if you're familiar with the Course in Miracles. Oh, yeah. 
So um, I did that workbook a couple of times and uh, it was very good. But he, but uh, David uh, disagreed with, uh, there's a lesson uh, that says, love your brother. And David is like, um, no, I would amend that. Be like, uh, love your brother, but keep an eye on him. Because I tell you, some people will take advantage of you. Can't be naive in this world. <laughs> so mm, what it's is about my... boundaries and like yes. you love from afar. So you can emanate and send that person love and whatever they need without getting caught up in it. Hmm. Right. Just because I'm loving that person doesn't mean I have to like sit with them and get murdered. You know, I, I can just send it to them. So I understand what David is saying. Uh, uh, so what kind of uh, spiritual practice we're doing? Were you meditating, praying, confession? <laughs> <laughs> I never did any confession. Oh, uh, no. I meditation was huge for me. I started out when I was in the beginning, really wanting and I was like desperate to learn this stuff. I was meditating for probably one to two hours a day. Wow. Okay. I was meditating a real lot. And also I was going through some personal stuff and I, I needed that at that point in my life. I just needed that. Um, so meditation was huge. And then as I was meditating, I was just learning to be, to open up. And it was really good for me all around, just in my life, the way my life is going and in opening up spiritually. I did a lot of chakra work. Mm -hmm. I would, I would, every single morning, I would just go through my chakras and um, clear them, basically, basically just visualizing them into where they needed to go and aligning them. And then, I am really big on a gratitude practice. So I do, I don't know, so many different kinds of gratitude practice. First thing I do when I wake up in the morning, I put my hand on my heart chakra. I feel it opening up and I just start going with what I'm grateful for. I do it with my kids at the dinner table before we eat or while we're eating, we talk about what we're grateful and thankful for. And I, try to during the day just stop and look around and just like oh this is pretty awesome mm. that has been really helpful you know from a personal standpoint and a spiritual standpoint and finding oh, yeah. that place of love oh yeah well i think gratitude is really really important and uh, it's such a simple thing and meditation as well um yeah. So what was your um, spiritual background? A lot of, uh, I grew up uh, Catholic. What was your background? I grew up Unitarian, which is very unstructured. There's no real understanding. It, it was good for me to have a background. We learned a lot about everybody else's religion. Okay. But I find it really difficult for me because I didn't have enough understanding of everybody else's religion to really understand what God was, which I think led the way to, for me to explore it and find out what it was for me, but I felt lost for a lot of my life. Do you like, um, in the Unitarian religion, do you like read scriptures from Buddhism and then from Islam or then, or do you, what do you do there? It really was more like an inspirational talk. Well, when I was growing up, we went to uh, Sunday school. Okay. Oh, I wasn't really a part of that. And we did nothing. We did like arts and crafts. And I'm sure it was, I don't really remember. I, I'm sure they structured it around some kind of teaching, but there was no Bible discussion or. Oh, well, was there a, a church? They had a church service? Yeah, there was a church service. So when the adults went into the church service, my mom dropped me off into, I was going to call it daycare, Sunday school. <laughs> right. It was like daycare. That's what it was. It felt like was daycare. We had our friends and we like did art projects and such. And okay, so that's, we went on different field trips to different churches and learned about different traditions. But most of the time, it was it, it wasn't impactful to me. Right. So it was just uh, fun times as a kid. Right. 
Right. But as an adult to go to a Unitarian church, it's, it's an amazing place. It is. It's um, usually the sermon is like an inspirational talk, which is nice. And personally, because I'm spiritual and I don't really prescribe to um, Bible teachings in that way, I can appreciate them for what they are, but not um, I don't know how to explain it. It's not, I don't take it literally. Uh, it's, it's really, I think it's motivational for me. Um, so, um, you've never been to confession. It's a fun thing. So you ought to try it sometime. <laughs> I'll have to research it. I wouldn't know how to go. Um, I, you know, I, I think there is a psychological basis to this because it's kind of like an emotional catharsis. You go there, I don't know if that's the right word. You go there and uh, you dump all the, the feelings. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure it's possible that, that somebody comes with, um, you know, with a lot of notes and just comes in and starts reading. <laughs> but usually people don't. They come up there and they're like, yeah, my sins uh, with this, this, and this, and that. But some people do it more often, like weekly or some. But um, um, I don't know. It's like uh, one time I was doing a lot of meditating, and I went to uh, to uh, to confession, and I felt like uh, after I after it, I felt like a surge of energy, and I was like, "Whoa!" You probably just I... so much go. It's probably a method of just letting go. It's just shedding. I I became like high off of confession. It's queer to say. Anyway, um, well, it helps you. I mean, if it if it helps you, then that's an amazing thing. Yeah. Um. So um, how do you? Okay, this is something that's um always on my mind when I'm when I'm uh, thinking about channeling stuff and whatnot is um how do you discern if something is either positive or not what you're getting on the other side. I have never received anything negative. So just being honest with you, I feel, first of all, I get feeling. I I'm get so much feeling when I'm channeling. And it feels like so much love coming through my body. And usually, and I don't know if you felt this when I channeled for you, if you could feel that energy coming through me, Usually the other person on the other side can sort of tap into that energy if, if they're sensitive to it. Um, so um, right off the bat, I think I would get a negative feeling. I've never, ever, and because I ask only to channel the highest possible vibrational energy. Maybe and, that's what protects you. Yeah. And I do a lot of spiritual work in general. I just, I focus on love all the time. Like it's my main focus in life. I focus on love. So I think that just, that protects me too, I think. Do you sage your home as well? Sometimes. I don't okay. have a regular <laughs> staging practice, but, but if I feel like, if I feel like I need to, I have my stash of sage and I'll go through the house with it. You know, uh, this is uh, kind of unrelated, I guess, but I saw this NBA player that was saging, <laughs> saging not only the um dressing room but he was saging he was going on the court and saging <laughs> like a uh, court side and all that uh carry irving he, he plays for uh brooklyn uh nets and um interest i think he's part very small part native american but still uh it is the first time i've seen a professional athlete um saging out in the open it was quite a sight to see you know <laughs> A lot of weird looks, huh? Although well, I think that's a little mainstream now, the whole sage. People who know nothing about spirituality now, I feel like understand about it. And they even sell it at Whole Foods. Yeah. Uh, whatever, uh, smudge sticks. I see them at Whole Foods now. Yeah, I think um, a lot of this stuff is becoming more mainstream, like meditation. I uh, like phrases like mental health, etc. Yeah. So, um, um, Oh, you also do healing, right? I do. I I don't always, I don't focus on healing in my work as far as I'm a healer, but usually when I'm channeling for somebody, 
the healing is just taking place, whatever needs to happen. And I've had a lot of clients when I'm channeling, ask for whatever entity to do whatever healing needs to be done. And they just work, they just will work on whoever's energy needs to be worked on. So it's not directly that you trained in healing, but it just happens through the channeling that you do. It does. Yeah. Okay. Very interesting. So you are, um, are you also, um, a lot of people that, uh, are into this stuff are vegetarian or vegan. Yeah. I eat vegan. (laughs) I do. So, uh, vegan means no meat and also no, no animal products like eggs. Yeah. No animal products at all. And, and we live a vegan lifestyle. So I don't wear any leather. Um, like I was talking about feathers. I don't do feathers and I, none of that, anything that comes from an animal, whether it's animal testing on products that we use for cleaning mm-hmm. or yeah, not nothing. So if you had a, a dream about um, eating uh, eggs and bacon, <laughs> that, oh would be like a, uh, that would be ominous dream. That would be, you'd be like, no, this is, this is definitely bad. Uh, something's gone no. wrong. No, I don't, I don't have that perspective at all. And I also am not a good or bad type person. I believe everybody needs to make the decision for themselves. What's right for me is not right for you or anybody else. I don't judge anybody, but for me, and it, and I am vegan mostly for animal rights, but also for health and environment and all the other pieces that go with it. But so I see that piece for the animal rights and just being, that just doesn't sit with me. I don't, if I was dreaming about it, I wouldn't eat it the next day, but I would just say, okay, I had a dream about it and I wouldn't call it bad. It's just, that's what was showing up for me for whatever reason. So you wouldn't call any person bad. What about, um, um, I'm trying to go for a less obvious name, uh, uh Timothy McVeigh, let's say. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> The infamous bomber of uh, some federal building back in the the nineties. Yeah, he, I'm aware of him. He he infam- uh, he said that uh, uh, he he said I know I'm going to hell, but I'm gonna meet a lot of friends there. That's what he said. Yeah. So, wouldn't objectively uh, Timothy McVeigh be kind of uh, uh, kind of problematic? Yeah, so it's an interesting question. Uh, I appreciate the question. (laughs) Um, So when I meet or hear about a bad person, right? The the person that, you know, kidnaps little kids or whatever, these people who are bad. Yeah, I think they're bad right? I don't think it's ever okay to hurt another person. And it, it, it does upset me when somebody does something bad or when something bad happens to someone that I care about, or even someone I don't know on the news. I do like, I feel that. And I feel upset. Like, why did someone have to hurt that little kid? Or I'm just using that because it's the most extreme example I can think of. Yeah. But I also know that that person is going through something. There's something wrong, right? There, it's not, I believe that we are all love and we're all trying to get there and we're all sort of playing this out, this sort of thing. We're trying to figure things out, right? Life is, life is hard and there's something wrong. So while I might not, I might still think that person's bad, right? I like to think I don't think they're bad, but I do. I do think they're bad. (laughs) And I, but I try to at least hold the space for understanding that there's something really wrong and I hope they get the help that they need. So nobody else has to get hurt or, and I do, I try to, as hard as it might be, I try to hold some love and project that because I think that's also more helpful than me spewing hate at that person. 
Oh, for sure. I try to yeah. catch myself if I am getting upset. It's all about how you react to it. And I don't want to, the hate that I might be feeling initially is just going to hurt me. It's not going to hurt that. Well, it might hurt that person too, but it's going to be like a boomerang effect. So I try to go back to that place. And so when it's really hard, I don't know if you've ever heard of loving kindness meditation. Uh, yeah, I've heard of it. Yes. When it's really hard to, for me to find a place to love somebody, like if somebody hurts me really bad and I start to feel like, oh, that person's bad. I don't like them. That was horrible what they did. I'll do a loving kindness where you start thinking about someone in your life that's easy to love. Like, so my daughter, of course, like it's easy for me to love her. I start thinking about them. And then I think it takes you through thinking about some random person you don't know. Can you have love for them? And then you go and find that love for that person that you are having a hard time with. So it sort of brings you there a little easier. Mm. So that's what I try to do if I'm having a hard time showing somebody Love. right having some uh compassion and seeing where where they uh, should be coming from um yeah. so i just had a thought as we were discussing this what do you um as you said holding space do you think um talking about prison form what do you think uh, they <laughs> These are... i don't know i don't know i'm just thinking about this they eh? don't we, we don't have to resolve this right yeah. now I'm, we're just yeah. having a conversation let's say um because a lot of people say, okay, a lot of people say that the way prisons are, are, you know, punishment is bad, that these people are in prison, and uh, a lot of times they're worse off than they get out. Now, I do agree with the principle that they should be, if they're bad, let's say the word bad, that they should be separated, but maybe there should be something done while they're there and kind of try to help them out. Although some people, it's hard to help people that um a don't want to be helped and b um are um are hostile to your help <laughs> so. yeah, it's a really tough problem yeah and i'm by no means an expert on it i took a couple criminal justice courses in <laughs> college where we actually had to write papers on that and like the oh prison wow system. i remember writing a paper on it and i think i mean it's a really tough problem. I don't have an answer. And again, I'm not an expert on it. And and it, I think there's something really broken in the prison system, really broken, because when you put somebody who is that kind of person that has that much, whatever it is, bottled, bottled up, and you isolate them, and you put them around other people like that, does that, is that fixing anything? Is it, is it, I mean, it's making us safer. If you have a mass murderer out there, what are you going to do? Like yeah. let them keep murdering people. I don't know what the answer is. I'll send them love. <laughs> <laughs> what, what did you study by the way? Huh? What did you study in college? Oh, I just took a couple of random classes. I, okay. I studied math actually. Oh, math. Wow. I major for my undergraduate, my major was in math. And then I had a minor in English creative creative writing, um, okay. and I took a bunch of philosophy. I I think maybe not quite a minor, but I almost had a minor in philosophy. Oh, very interesting, very interesting background. Um, do you yourself uh, avoid the, the news? A lot of people have different philosophy on how to um, relate to the world, and they're saying the news is negative, mostly negative. Da -da -da -da. So, what do you think about that? Yeah, I don't watch watch the news, I rarely turn on the TV. And it's really embarrassing because most of the time, I don't know what is going on in the world. I mean, I get it, I'm, I am on Facebook. So I get, I mean, I know kind of what's going on in that way, but I really stay out of it. And it makes me feel bad. It really makes, it really affects me. So when I see and hear about all of these horrible things happening, I just, I really feel it. And it's not healthy for me. Mm. So I cut that out years ago. And I rarely watch TV because I just feel like, I mean, there are certain, 
things I have watched, but it's so much is negative. Yeah. Even the, um, the, sh the shows that are on these days, a lot of times they're quite um, seductively made that they may make it attractive to watch, but they're not really as good as um, maybe shows used to be. They, they have a lot of ideas that are not conducive to good things. Yeah. I mean, I think if you, I don't think anything horrible is going to happen to you if you watch the stuff and take it in. But if that's all you're doing, well, first of all, go live your life, right? There's the element of that. But if you can sit down and relax and watch a show every once in a while, okay. I kind of wish I could do that just to turn off, turn everything off and just sit and watch something for a little bit. Um, but I think I've been so far removed from it. I haven't right. watched it so long now. And I tried to watch a movie a couple of weeks ago and I couldn't get past the first 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh my God, this is really boring. I got to do something else. Right. But can you really turn off though? I think uh, even when you're turned off, I think you're receiving the messages that's coming from either the movies or the, the news media. And uh, as some people have a theory that, um, that most people are just brainwashed. But whatever they're watching, they're just embedded in their psyche somewhere, you know? Yeah. I'm not sure. I, I mean, I certainly what you take in it's affecting everything and it's part of like the global consciousness but I think it also depends on the person and how much work that person is doing how present that person is right really uh, present person and really in tune with yourself then I don't think you're 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 safer you're safer that way I think Going back to uh, channel, uh, channeling, um, uh, since you, you've done it for a while, I assume that, uh, how, how has this affected you, like doing channeling on a, on a weekly basis? Do you ever get guidance that other people receive and you're like, oh yeah, this could, um, this could benefit me as well? It always benefits me. Anytime I channel for anybody, it always benefits me. The information is not especially when I'm channeling uh, some of these really high vibrational energies. It's so much, first of all, just me being in that energy is helpful. Just mm -hmm. me. And if I'm having a bad day or I don't feel well, like I'm feeling down or whatever, if I'm channeling, it's like an instant pick me up. Mm -hmm. It's, it feels so good. Like you were saying you were, you got high from the confession is maybe I don't feel high when I'm done, but I feel good. I feel really good. So in that way, I, I get that. And I think whatever healing is taking place for that person on the other end, I'm benefiting from that too. Mm. And then the messages come through and I'm always learning something. Yeah, like what you said uh, last time. Mm, I'll just read a couple of things because I don't want I don't want to put my stuff too much out there. But it, it was saying like reluctance to let go, but trust yourself more. Um, um, that I have some perceptions that I really um, cling on. I guess. Uh, yeah, unworthiness. Let go. Let it go. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Um, and that for us helping some people that the energy behind the intent is what's important um, uh, and have, have confidence. Like these are, these are like a really good kind of um, interesting observations and, and really um, I would say good advice about how to overcome your challenges. Yeah. Yeah. I am. It can always be applied to everyone. I mean, sometimes I get really specific things about like, you were saying if someone's asking me about a problem in their marriage, like maybe the specific message in that won't be for everybody, but they're going to give some kind of message of, of love, whether it be loving yourself or what you were saying about letting go, like anybody could take something from that. Hmm. Um, so how do people, um, talking about letting go how do people 
stress is a big issue. Um, it probably deal with a lot of, a lot of clients that have, uh, you know, just can't relax. Um, and, uh, when I kind of related note, I, uh, there's uh, cause I'll kind of dabble. I used to dabble quite a bit in, in acting and I watched this thing where, um, Bradley Cooper was talking to a, a former teacher and, uh, he was saying that the former teacher really helped him to relax because, uh, people don't realize this, but doing this on a small scale, maybe it's kind of, um, you have to be kind of relaxed to do this in a way, although I'm not totally relaxed now, but, but I imagine doing, um, uh, films and stuff like that, because you have to go into a specific emotion. So the importance of relaxation is huge in life, uh, cause it will help you in so many levels. So, um, so how do people, uh, in, in short, how do people learn to, to be more relaxed and, and combat stress? Uh, what well, there are two things that I think are really important. Hmm. First, I'm sure everybody can guess what I'm going to say is meditation, <laughs> right? Of course. Meditation, but, but knowing how to just get to that place. So if you are feeling it and being in tune with your body, so if you're feeling that stress, so if you have a meditation routine where you're meditating every day, that's just gonna help you overall. But you also have to be connected to your own self. You have to be connected to your body and check in with your body throughout the day to feel what's going on. Because a lot of times people are stressed and they don't know that they're stressed because they're like, doing this and they're doing that and they're all over the place. And so there's a little bit of presence that has to happen. And once you get that presence, you can just do a quick breathing exercise. And I always tell people to breathe in through the bottoms of their feet. There's an energy center at the bottom of your feet. It mm -hmm. just, and then it just can go up your whole body, hold it for a little bit and then feel when you hold your breath, you can feel your own energy. Wait, and you breathe, you breathe up. Yep. You breathe in, you imagine your breath coming in through the bottoms of your feet mm -hmm. and you breathe in slowly moving that breath, imagining it come all the way up to the top of your head. And when it's there, you feel it for a second and you can feel your energy. That's your energy. And I, I always tell people here, feel that's you. And it's your connection to the universe. It's the connection to the earth and you're safe here. And I think safety is like so important for people to feel safe in their body. And then you breathe out and you can just let anything that needs to go, just come out and you breathe it out the bottoms of your feet. Oh, wow. It's kind and of grounding you yourself at the same time. You're grounding yourself, you're breathing, you're being present, you're feeling safe in your body. And you can just do that one time and feel the shift in your body. And you can do that with your eyes opened, walking down the street. Once you practice it a little while, yeah, it just becomes like something. I mean, I do this, I don't even realize I'm doing it now. Like right. I just am so in tune. I know I need to, like, I'm just find myself breathing that way. Um, so the other thing with stress is having fun. Oh yes. Finding something fun in whatever you're doing, the more fun you're having. And if you can just like, while you're at work, just find a way to make it fun or shift your mindset so that it is fun. And a lot of times it's just that shift in mindset takes the stress away like that. It's, yeah, it's funny because um, some people do something and they have a lot more fun than other people. Yeah. And it's like a noticeable difference. And you, those people that have fun with it usually do a better job anyway. Yeah, it's, it's like, all perspective. I'm, I'm reading this book. Uh, I can't remember the title right now, but it's about uh, happiness. And uh, uh, it's basically said that people that, that are happier do better at their jobs and also live longer and are healthier. <laughs> well, that makes sense. I mean, it makes perfect sense to me without seeing the numbers and the research. I mean, yeah, it's a, it was written by a guy that, that was teaching at Harvard for many years. So um, it must, must be legit, I guess, especially uh, studying, uh, you know, happiness, which is a very kind of um, 
um, non-contaminated, I would say, of, uh, yeah. of the negative influences. Yeah. Um, right. Talk about um, something that's also interesting to me, but I, I'm also I approach with a certain caution, which okay. is a <laughs> service astral uh, travel. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So the, the way I understand astral travel is that you go out of your body and you, you're in uh, another dimension. And um, which, to my, in my theory, in my hypothesis, can be either good or bad. And, um, and it, it's a big astral world out there, even bigger than ours, probably. So, um, so what's your, your experience have been and how, yeah, how do you distinguish where you are, basically? Well, I think the way that I, my definition of astral traveling is you're moving your consciousness, hmm. right? You're, you're just moving your consciousness. So there is that separation, right? So you're separating from your body and you're going somewhere else. Now, whether that's another dimension Sure, you can go to another dimension, but that doesn't necessarily mean you have to go to another dimension. You could just go somewhere else in this dimension, right? And I look at it as consciousness. So, I mean, my body is, my soul is within my body. If I move my consciousness somewhere else, I mean, I'm still sort of connected to my body, but my body is not physically going there. So I don't look at it as this scary thing that I'm like separating and I'm never going to find it back to my body. Mm -hmm. I don't look at it like that. So if there's some place you want to go astral traveling, you can kind of just project yourself there, right? Oh, I never that's thought. How I, that's how I look at it. But, but you get to... Um... Because uh, I think the Robert Monroe, one of the uh, old school guys that did that, he, um, it seemed like in his work, he was actually uh, feel like he would actually be there. Like he would uh, completely leave the body behind. Like all the whole sense of self would, would be in that place where he was. Yeah. So I think there are different, like in channeling, there are different ways to do it. And in astral traveling, there are different ways to do it. So I also know of a technique. So the way that if I were going to astral travel and I, I mean, if I want to know what a place looks like before I go there, and it's no different than using my intuition, I ask and I like can, can see, get some impressions about what it's going to be. I see what it looks like. I, there was this technique where you pull yourself I don't know if you heard of this, if you've done research on astral traveling, somebody said, okay, you pull yourself out of your body like this. Right. With rope. Did you hear it? Did you hear about that method? Did you ever try that? Um, I am vaguely familiar. I, I think I've heard of it. Yeah. I think, and there are probably a million techniques and how to do it. Yeah. Right. Get that separate. For me, I just feel like I don't need to be separate. So I don't, I don't do that. But I do believe you can do that. You can separate yourself, but you are presenting the question is sort of like a lot of fear with that. And then you end <laughs> up and you don't know where you are. So right. if you are, have fear going into something, I would say you shouldn't do it. Okay. That's well, my personal thing. Like if there's fear surrounding something, get safe with it first. Right. Right. A, a lot of people are afraid of public speaking. How do it go? That seems like a, a innocent thing that's positive, but a lot of people have, uh, you know, huge fear. Um, um, I think uh, at one point I had a really huge fear. Now, maybe if, depending on the crowd, I guess, but um, so how do people deal with that? That seems like, um, to me, seems like an objectively um, good thing to do to overcome that people have. Are you taught, are you at, literally asking me about public speaking or are you asking about astral travel in a, in a, if you're scared of astral traveling? Um, yeah, it's, it's a kind of, a, 
Yeah, but well, I guess because uh, astral travel, I'm, 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 uh, How do you I'm get something to worry about. But if it's something that's uh, that's like objectively um, that I find okay, that I find good, then how do I overcome the the fear? Let's say through visualization. Okay. So you would at least the way I deal with my fears and how I teach people is you visualize the end goal. So if you want to ask to travel and you want to not be scared when you're going to do it, which I would yeah. recommend hundred percent. If, if you're stepping into something like that, you would want to make sure you're not scared. You visualize yourself at the end goal of that. So whatever that looks like for you, whether it's in a really cool experience, astral traveling, or you are coming back and waking up from it, right? You're back and like, wow, that was the most amazing thing. And right. you can just run that over and over again. Like, oh my God, it was so cool. It wasn't scary at all. It was like, I ran into X, Y, and Z and had a great lunch with whatever, whatever you want to do when you're astral traveling. I would play it. I'd get like a five second clip in your mind and just run it until okay. it feels really good. And that goes with public speaking too. <laughs> okay, so, it's a po so it's a positive visualization that you can use for anything that you're afraid of that eventually you'll start to see it in a, in a positive light. Yes. Okay. And you're sort of living it, right? If you have it and you're playing it over and over again, you're kind of living that. Hmm. Um, so being, um, so you said that is being a medium is something you do less than being a channel. You know, it's kind of a toss ups. Right. I, I would say, I would say it's probably equal the amount of time I do both. People are really more interested, I think, in mediumship and having a hiring a medium yeah. than a channeler, because I just don't think a lot of people know what a channeler does. Okay. You want to get in touch with their loved ones. Right, so. right, right. Oh, so you do that. Sorry, uh, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention. Okay. So you do the, the um, uh, contact with uh, with lost uh, relatives or yeah. friends, etc. Yeah. Um, yeah. So is that a similar process? You just tune into the energy and uh, you go. Not really. It's more like my intuition work. So I, how I teach people is you picture a door. So it's through your imagination, you picture yourself opening a door and you know that the spirit's going to be there when you open the door. And so I ask to connect. I, I want to talk to someone's, you know, so-and-so I open the door and I see him standing there. Now, sometimes that person doesn't come through because somebody else really wants to come through and talk. Right. Um, <laughs> but I try my best. I, I haven't had too many problems connecting with a specific person. And eventually I might be able to get to that person. But sometimes like the grandmother really wants to come through. Okay. That does kind of make sense. Uh, or does it, did it ever happen to you that you opened the door and there's just nobody there? And you're like, oh, my God. <laughs> um, the only time it happened that the spirit wasn't there, they were hiding. And it was part of the message for the person. It, it okay. was like part of the message. So I just couldn't see the person. Right. But I knew they were there. I couldn't see them. And then sometimes I'll get it where I can't see their face. So I can see like, like they're showing me the back of their head. And but I you try to move them around and I tried I'll ask them to show me their face but it's all about the message that they want to give the person but you're able to see like uh pretty clearly the their um the features yeah and it just depends it, it depends on the spirit what they want to show me mm. and can like the um the feedback be very uh specific when they when they talk about it um what message they uh, want to give oh yeah i get the message really clear really clear uh what about uh, uh channeling is that um um how does that play out and 
because I, I think you said something about um, specific where that you, you, you tune into the energy, not specifically like all they know, right? Right. Yeah, that's a good distinction to make. So for instance, when I was channeling, uh, what was his name? Uh, Joe McHugh. Joe McHugh. I didn't have all the knowledge that he had. It wasn't like I'm him. I'm tuning into his energy. So I didn't have all his 12 step knowledge. I didn't know what step one through 12, the specific steps were. Right. I just could feel the message that he wanted to project. Uh, so with channeling, oh, now I forgot the question. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, oh, it's, um, it's about specifics. So oh. uh, in channeling, um, it's not about, you don't tune into every specific that the person knew when they were alive. Let's say you just tune more to the, to the energy, right? Yeah. So it's what they want to project to you, what they want you to know. It's not that I become that, that energy. It's that I can get, like, I let them go through what they want to project. And sometimes it's really specific. Sometimes it's general. Right. And it's more about what you need to hear. Whoever I'm channeling for, it's what they need to hear. Does it ever feel like overwhelming? Like the, there's so much going on. There's like this person is just like ramsacking the energy. No, I'm, I don't know. <laughs> no, I've never had that experience. Sometimes I have a stronger connection than others. And, and the stuff, it flows faster. Yeah. The words are coming faster. Um, sometimes it's like, a little bit like slow coming, but that could just be the energy I'm tapping into too. And it's different because when I'm doing mediumship work, I'm very clairvoyant. So I can see stuff in my imagination. Mm. Uh, but when I'm channeling, I might see images, but I'm not seeing what the person I'm channeling looks like or that energy, what it looks like. I'm, I'm more seeing from their point of view. I mean, my eyes are closed, so I'm not seeing anything physically. Right. So most of the time it's pretty dark. Like I'm just have my eyes closed, but sometimes I might see a color or something. Right. And clairvoyant just means you, you have a, a, a extra sensory uh, sight perception. That's right. It's my psychic sense of vision sight. Yeah. That's kind of cool. Did you develop that through, through uh, meditation that you uh, kind of learned uh, the skill or this is, I guess uh, everybody has different gifts and some people are more visual. And Well, I think everybody can develop anything they want to develop. I really do. And with clairvoyance, focusing on your imagination mm -hmm. is key. So if you want to develop clairvoyance, just practice imagining things. And I know that it sounds silly, oh, yeah. but, but really, if you have a good imagination, if you can get clear pictures in your imagination, because that's where your intuition is. When you get clairvoyant information, that's where it's showing up in your imagination. So of course you want to be able to have good pictures in your imagination. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. If you want to have a more better Picture imagination, just picture stuff more. That yes. makes sense. <laughs> Do it more. And I think a lot of people in the spiritual community are visualizing a lot anyway as part of manifestation and, and yes. that kind of thing. So just if you're working on that, you're going to work on the other thing. Yeah, that would be a good place to end up um, here. Like, oh, how do people create a... Uh, a better life for themselves. You probably have, uh, you've done a lot of different readings for, for people. So you, you probably noticing different uh, trends or what uh, the uh, uh, channels on the other side are not channels, the entities on the other side are guiding those people, your clients to, to do in their life. Yeah. I think number one is shifting your perspective and mm -hmm. finding finding the positive in things. So really shifting the perspective, being gentle with yourself, which is self-love is huge and having fun. I think 
almost no one I feel like is having fun. Right. <laughs> no one is having fun. I hate to say it like that, but it's huge. I think the fun factor is, is huge. Yeah. You can, um, okay. Just a simple thing. I, I like basketball and, and there's, um, there's a player real like, well, also comes from uh, Slovenia, uh, Luka Doncic. And, uh, people say he plays with, uh, with, he plays with joy, a sense of joy. And this is not something that it's interesting because this is not something that people usually say about other players, but, but him is just like, uh, just like people can just pick up that he just loves the game so much and that he plays with, he just loves to play the game, whether it's for money or not, he probably do it for free as well. You know, and he, people can just tell. Yeah. Well, that's the energy behind it, but it goes with that shifting the perspective you get to choose. So if you choose to go into something, having fun yeah. or like even setting the intention before you do it, I'm going to go out there. Like I got to go to work today and it's going to be fun. And I don't care what happens. I'm going to make it fun. You're looking for that. And then you're going to have more fun. Right. And, and it's something I've heard like uh, uh, professional athletes uh, like uh, give each other advice. Just just have a fun out there. And but right. but it kind of sounds counterintuitive because you're out there to accomplish this goal. But yet, you know, they're like, just have some fun out there, you know, so you're under so much pressure to win or whatever pressure it is that that amount of pressure is just going to weigh you down to how you're going to have fun. And how are you going to do well, if you're like, just have all of that sitting on top of you? Yeah, that if you're too serious, you're not gonna be um, too much success in the world, maybe, probably. Exactly. <laughs> That's how I think anyway. So, um, uh, what, uh, have I not mentioned? So you do uh, intuitive development for people. You do, um, um, channeling or mediumship, uh, and healing, I guess, healing services as well. Is that the separate yeah, so thing? Healing, it's, it's, it, I work with healing mostly with channeling. So I do, it's like the two are kind of together. Okay. And where can people find you? So they can find me, uh, uh, my website is elizabethphoenix.com. Okay. And I have a YouTube channel. So that's where most of my stuff is on YouTube. And if you search for Elizabeth Phoenix, you can find me there. And I post uh, intu intuition exercises almost every day. I'm trying to do them every day. Oh, this is and on I, Facebook. No, that's on YouTube. Okay. But you, okay. Yeah, but I'm also on Facebook and Instagram. So if you search Elizabeth Phoenix, you're going to find me. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to post uh, some of those links uh, in the description as well. Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, it was very fun to do this podcast. Thank you for being on. Yeah, it was fun for, for me too. Thanks for having me. And thanks everybody for uh, watching and listening. Thank you.